Back in 1787 in Philadelphia, one of the greatest ideas that the human race ever had was launched. It was the creation of the United States of America with our new constitution. In that hot summer day of September of that year, the first person to leave the Constitutional Convention Hall was Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was the oldest of the 55 delegates to the convention. When he exited the hall, a woman approached him and asked a very important question. She said, Dr. Franklin, what kind of government have you given us? Was George Washington going to be like the king and be a monarch? Was there going to be a democracy that was full and open? Nobody really knew. Franklin looked the young woman squarely in the eye and uttered what was known as the Franklin Challenge. He said, if you can keep it. Throughout human history, any attempt at making the people the sovereign, giving the people the power, even if it did occur, did not last very long from the Roman Empire forward. So Benjamin Franklin and the other great men who served in that Constitutional Convention understood that this was indeed an experiment. President Ronald Reagan once said that freedom is not guaranteed and we could lose it in one generation. And you know, today we probably feel that sentiment more than ever. If we allow the hate America, blame America left to win control of America, freedom will die in our great country. President Trump believes patriotism is important. American citizens, both young and old and all generations, know the glorious truth about our nation. And if they do know the truth, then they will keep freedom as our burning light. The enemy within America is determined to destroy the truth. Those enemies on the left want to transfer or change America into a state where freedom is swept into the dustbin of history. We the people will never allow that nightmare to happen if we know the truth. President Trump's salute to America was a patriotic and educational event to promote the truth for the American people. Those on the left and their co-conspirators in the media attempted to tear down this great event because they knew the American people would love the message. The New York Times went as far as releasing a video criticizing America to counter the president's effort. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo recently said, we can't make America great again because America never was great. Many on the left like Bernie Sanders and Barack Obama claim that America is not the greatest country in the world. I ask a simple question. If America is not the greatest country in the world, which country is the greatest country in the world? Iran, Russia, Cuba, China? President Obama claimed that America was not exceptional. America invented the idea of exceptionalism. The president tells the truth about America's success, and with the Salute to America celebration, he made it clear to hundreds of millions of people in America and around the world left and the media criticized the use of tanks and military equipment and flyovers for the salute event. They claimed that that kind of display is something that dictators promote. President Eisenhower and President Kennedy featured military equipment in both of their inaugural parades. After the Persian Gulf War, victory, tanks and military units rumbled down Pennsylvania Avenue. Every American should know that it was the military success in the Revolutionary War that founded America. And it was our great military and heroic men and women that saved the world from dictators and allowed freedom to grow around the globe. The President wanted to remind us that if America did not exist, what kind of world would exist today? Think about that. It would be a world that the left might be proud of because it would be a world without freedom. The Salute to America was an event that told the true story of the land of the free and the home of the brave. Millions of people attempt to enter America every year. You do not witness citizens of the world attempting to enter China, Russia, or Cuba, or Iran. The left media attack what they wrongfully call climate deniers. You know, it's about time we started challenging America's greatness deniers. Today, Ben Franklin's words ring true. This generation understands what the great man's warning to future descendants of the revolution 
was all about, that we must be vigilant. The torch has been passed to we, the people of this generation, to preserve America that so many fallen heroes have fought to save so that it would live on for future generations and our posterity. That's what President Trump's salute to America was all about. I'm Pat McDonough. Now, here's Frank Marchant coming up with some interesting and sometimes unbelievable facts. It wasn't that many years ago when JFK said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Well, since that time, his party has been walking slowly to the left, until recently, when they're running to the left as fast as they can run. Aiding and abetting illegals used to be a crime. Helping, him, helping anyone break our laws was not acceptable. But an elected official who spends your tax dollar to assist illegal aliens to break our law is repugnant at best and treasonous at worst. So then what can you say about a congresswoman who has sent staff members to Mexico to teach illegal aliens to pretend they cannot speak Spanish and in so doing exploit the system which allows them to gain entrance into the U.S.? A Democrat congresswoman, Veronica Escobar, is doing that just now as I speak. People on her payroll are being paid by your tax dollar to go to Mexico and teach illegal aliens, any loophole needed to game the system. This is your hard-earned tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen, but not every Democrat is as foolish as this poor misguided soul. Not too long ago, one Democrat had this to say. Those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants. The bill before us will certainly do some good. It will authorize some badly needed funding for better fences and better security along our borders. And that should help stem some of the tide of illegal immigration in this country. And here is what the gentleman who currently sits in the Oval Office had to say about that clip. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. Stay tuned for the round table, we'll be right back. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club. Let your voice be heard across the state. For just $20 a year, you'll receive inside access to our social media network, direct delivery of our Super Citizen newsletter, and advance notice and discounts to our special events and more. Call 410-238-0025. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club, today. Talk Radio 680, WCBM. Sean and Frank, Maryland's Wake Up Call. Baltimore's Town Hall with Bruce Elliott. And the most powerful names in talk. Talking about what matters to you. Stimulating talk, breaking news. Where Baltimore comes to talk. Talk Radio 680, WCBM. Potential Me sells donated items on eBay and uses the proceeds to take those in need shopping for the ideal garment needed for any special or professional occasion. Proms, wedding, family reunions, and graduations in stylish attire. Donations are graciously accepted at potential-me.com or call 443-461-461. 
6408. Potential me. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back, everybody, for our round table where we're going to discuss a lot of different subjects. One of the things I'd like to start off with, Frank, is uh, this thing recently uh, where this is kind of crazy. You know, the thing about the left is not only do they not understand America, they seem to like socialism, which is a form of government that eventually leads to fascism, which eventually mm -hmm. leads to no liberty. But in addition to that, they are nasty. Seem to be. They seem to, seem be nasty. to be a little bit they, nasty. They need to go to the Roseanne Bar Charm School <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I was only allowed on three state ballots, okay? Three states, California, uh, Colorado or something, and, um, <laughs> and Florida, okay? Okay, three state ballots. I still came in six. <laughs> Some of you know the state. But it was a Starbucks. Now, remember the guy who's the president of Starbucks who was running for president? Yes. He was going to be a third yes. party, centrist, common sense American. Yes. And he has been kidnapped by a UFO or something. Yes, he's, he's disappeared. Yes. He's now we living at Disneyland. We don't know where he is. <laughs> he's, his face has been on milk cartons with Joe Biden. <laughs> but okay. in one of the Starbucks, bucks, some snowflake, sure that was this was a lefty. Yes, of course. He or she told the manager that she was uncomfortable because there were six law enforcement officers standing in the Starbucks. They were, the story is they were ready to go on to their next shift to protect and preserve our lives. And they had their little cups of coffee. And, and, and she, that made her afraid. Yes. So well, the manager went over to the policeman and said, you guys don't mind if you have to leave, do you? Yeah. So anyway, uh, a lot of heck was raised. The union, uh, fellow police officers, and just people in this area. How crazy. So first of all, and this is to the credit of Starbucks. So I hope this guy runs for president, whoever he is. To his credit, Starbucks apologized to the police force, said they could have free coffee, no donuts. Well, Starbucks doesn't do donuts. They do different stuff. They do, right. Right. They do high class donuts. Yeah. Cost ten dollars right. a donut. Yeah. Uh, and so they apologized formally. Now I don't know if this knucklehead of a manager was fired or disciplined on put of, on administrative leave. I don't know, but this is the kind of crazy stuff yeah. that these arrogant lefties have the nerve to say that they are afraid because law enforcement. You're supposed to be afraid if criminals are. In I was going to say, think how afraid she'd be if somebody came in with a gun and robbed the place. If she's that afraid of a police officer being there to protect the place. Goofy. Yeah, and then we have, of course, all of this stuff is going on recently. We have the Betsy Ross flag, yes. a, a, a woman who was an early enterpriser, well, well ahead of the feminist movement, uh, who built up a company, and the, the knuckleheads over at Nike wouldn't put the shoe out because a great American, a great hero, a patriot, uh, what is that guy's, Kaepernick? Uh, yes, Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick, who had one good yes. year for San Francisco and then showed yes. his true abilities and never went back to right. the uh, second, NFL. Second-rate quarterback. Second-rate quarterback. Uh, he said that he thought it was offensive to the people if they had Betsy Ross's flag and Nike pulled it. Yes, of course. So, Everyone's offensive to Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, but why is it always one knucklehead, one lefty? I mean, it's only Colin. It's only this person. Why does one person have that much power against common sense? People on the right usually don't do that kind of stuff. They don't expect everyone to, everyone to kowtow to the thing that they say. People on the left expect everyone on the right to kowtow to whatever they say. It's a double standard. Yeah, but I can understand it. They're better than us. Yes, they're smarter, smarter than us. Smarter, clearly, they're writer than us. Mm -hmm. if that's such a word. Yeah. Uh, therefore, uh, they know better. Yes. We're, yes. So we right. should understand and, and be in our place. Right. And and listen to our uh, smarter than us group. Now, the other thing is that uh, Antifa's the, the the cowards dressed in black with masks. Uh, Antifas, the, the, the cowards dressed in black with masks who attack senior citizens and others uh, with weapons, 
they attacked a reporter or a guy that worked for a blog. Yes. And, all, you know, the guy caused a uh, brain bleed with this young right. man, right? And it also it came out that an elderly man was attacked. And the police were told to stand down and yeah, not help him. By the liberal mayor right. of Portland, Oregon. Right. Now, Antifa's should be on, number one, they should be banned from the Internet. And they're not. They recruit through the Internet. Number two, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Firm or whatever that group is that bans the Sisters from the Poor because, uh, you know, they're too much to the right. Yes. Uh, and they ban everybody else who's conservative. But they don't ban these guys. They no. don't say they should be banned. This violent no. group, they don't say they should be banned. So Antifa should actually be investigated by the FBI for hate crimes. Uh, one final point that I would like to mention is... <clears throat> It's Wiley Coyote yes. that tries to get the road run. <laughs> Yes, that's correct. They drop boulders, they yes. fire cannons, dynamite, whatever they can yes, get, right? That's right. But they can never get the roadrunner. Yes. Donald Trump reminds me of the roadrunner. The yes. radical left always tries to blow him up or do things or criticize him, and it never works out. No, it doesn't. So salute to America was wonderful. No. Right. They tried it to was. get him, and then they all shut up. You know, yes. there was deadly silence because it was such a success. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the one that I like. He was going to use the powerful weapon that only America has. Only America has this powerful nuclear weapon, and that is the tariff. Because we control the international banking system in mm -hmm. terms of where that's they put their money because they put it in America that's for right. safety. Mm -hmm. You know, we do all the loans, we have all the allies, so we have that weapon. So he was going to use the tariff against our friends in Mexico. And 5% uh, if they didn't start helping, and then it would go to 25%. Well, CNN and Rachel Maddow and all the rest of that bunch, your friend Cuomo, yes. they all said this was a terrible idea. They are our friends. They are our relations to the South. We can't do this. It'll increase the price of burritos <laughs> and tacos. <laughs> this is terrible. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, to their surprise, the president of uh, Mexico, Obrado, Obrador, Obrador. Now, Obrador is a socialist, okay? Yes. Talk about politics makes strange bedfellows, right? So to the surprise of everybody, President Obrador likes Trump. And he says to the government, yes, we are going to put troops on the southern border down yep. where Central America is. I'm also going to put troops on the American border, and I'm going to open up camps like uh, Ocrazio's concentration camps, right? right? Right. So this guy is cooperating, and they're wondering what. And I mean, it was like in a snap of a finger, he was with Trump 100%. Right. So all the lefties, once again, they couldn't put the dynamite on uh, the roadrunner, Trump. But here's where it gets yeah. good, see? Ob Obrador is a socialist, and the cartels and, and the drug lords have been fighting him and going after him for 30 years because they are connected to the establishment. That's right. The establishment, That's the, right. It, uh, what do you call it, the parties in Mexico right. that have been running the roost. So this guy gets in, and now it's, it's his chance to get back at them. So he's Trump's natural ally, because Trump wants to get rid of the cartels and the drug lords who are bringing all the MS-13 gangs, all the Mexican mafia, all these people into America, so they are natural allies. And here's what's really interesting. He is taking, Obrador is taking the National Guard and he's making it the only law enforcement agency in Mexico. He's getting rid of the Mexican police in Mexico City. Well, there's an awful lot of corruption there. Bingo. Awful you lot get a cookie, see? I do, I good. <laughs> and, and also he's getting rid of the military federales. He's putting them all into this... Uh, National Guard in Mexico, which apparently is pretty honest. Yeah. Okay, and he's going to use them to go after the cartels. They're so, honest for now. Well, at least for now. <laughs> but he wants, he wants to pay back the cartel. Now, I don't know if President Trump knew about all these dynamics or not, but the left is now, they are so embarrassed, they can't do anything because they can't can criticize a fellow socialist. No. Who likes Trump. 
And the other part about that is, remember, Trump negotiated, he got rid of Bill Clinton's NAFTA. Bill Clinton, Obama, the Bushes, they all like NAFTA. Yes, they They do. all like free trade, open trade, global trade, screw America trade, right? They all love that. Yeah. And uh, Trump got rid of NAFTA, and he surprised the left again when they were screaming, you can't get rid of NAFTA. Mexico and Canada will never agree to a new right. treaty, and they did. Yeah. So now this new treaty, which they all like, the Canadian prime minister, the Mexican president, and it's good for America, it is now sitting in the House of Representatives with the two leaders of the House, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Well, you know, another thing that has been showing its ugly head lately has been the hypocrisy that, uh, that just is just rotten in the Democrat Party right now. Just, 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 it's just pure rotten. And I know I'm going to hear about it. Uh, I, I have somebody who constantly tells me that. that you must have a liberal left wing friend. I have friend. a liberal left wing friend who's going to let me know about this more than one. But now, here's, here's some examples of hypocrisy. Let me know what you think of this. Now, if our fighting men and women are forced to fly coach, tell me why then should a member of Congress? get to fly first class. Why? That, that's just On a, our tax On money. our tax dollar. Now, there's a bill that was just introduced called the Coach Act that would prohibit a tax money to pay for a congressman's first class ticket. Well, is that the one where they have to walk? Well, they could, as far as I'm concerned, they should all walk. Well, it would probably I'd like, help I'd us like all to out. see Ocasio walk to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Well, again, speaking of Ocasio, here's another one. Um, AOC, crying about the border, drinking out of toilets. None of this was true. She's, she's patholo almost pathological in the things she said. You can almost look up, and, and I'll, I'll show this on the screen. You'll see it. Uh, people have to drink out of toilets. Never happened. Uh, the priests who went to the border said, we never saw anything like that. Nobody saw anything like that. This woman just makes up what she hopes is true and then tells the world. There's abuse in these, in these facilities. There's abuse. This was them on their best behavior, and they put them in a room with no running water, and these women were being told by CBP officers to drink out of the toilet. They were drinking water out of the toilet, and that was them knowing what a congressional visit was coming. Good afternoon. My name is Roy Villarreal. I am the Chief Patrol Agent for the Tucson Border Patrol Sector. Today is July 3rd. My goal today is to dispel some of the misinformation that's out there in regards to our detention facilities. So come with me. Aliens are not forced to drink out of the toilet. Aliens have options. There's fresh water that's provided on a regular basis in a water cooler. There's also water that is provided in this one. This is a combination of toilet, sink, and the sink provides fresh water. The wall is marked as agua potable, which is potable water. There's nothing wrong with this water. We're not forcing aliens to drink out of the toilet. It's all propaganda. It's, it truly is. It's the radical well, left propaganda. But we are, and we have said it, 11 shows we've done. I think they've all been pretty good. Frank does all the bells and whistles that you see on the show uh, that makes it look so great and makes it entertaining. And, uh, and of course, uh, Kimberly Klasek is not with us for this show because she had an event that had been pre-scheduled that she must attend. She didn't have a choice. We are going to take a vacation, or as Frank uses that Hispanic word, hiatus, we are going to be back on the air in prime time at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings once again on uh, September the 15th, okay, September the 15th, but during the interim, that's another Hispanic word. Yes, it during is. During the interim, interim uh, we will be on our Super Citizen YouTube, and TV Free Baltimore, famous TV Free Baltimore. Our shows will be airing on there. We will be doing some shows. Every uh, week you can pick them up. You can also pick up all of our videos. And if you haven't been to our website, I mean, it's not only videos in there. All of our TV shows are there, all 11 of them. And if you have anything you want to tell us blog-wise, we'd love to hear from you. Whether you love us or hate us, we'd still love to hear from you. We want to hear what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Now, also, this uh, the website is 
supercitizenusa.com. Not citizens with an S, but supercitizenusa.com. And we have a lot of things coming up. Our newsletter will be going out in the very near future to thousands of people. Uh, we have our radio show on Saturday nights on WCBM 680 AM, a 50,000-watt radio station, every Saturday from 8 until 10. And we have our Super Citizen event coming up on the 14th. Right. A lot of, I know a lot of dates I'm throwing at you, but September is going to be big. Uh, on September 11th, we have our annual flag-waving tribute to the victims and the families of 9-11. And uh, that is up on, uh, what is that road? That's 152. I can't think of the name of that road up in Mountain our, Road. Mountain Road. You are the man. Mountain Road, where we get up there with our flags, and the children are there, and the grandchildren are there, and the dogs are there. There are no cats. The dogs are there. And thousands of cars go underneath that bridge. And what day is this going to be? That is going to be on a Tuesday. 9-11 is a Tuesday. Okay. It'll be from 4 until 6. You bring your flag, you bring your dog, you bring your family, and you join us. And we, It's nonpartisan, totally nonpartisan. Right. It's nothing to do with politics. It's a flag wave. Bring your flag. Uh, it's a, a cacophony. It's another cacophony. Hispanic oh, word. I like that word. A cacophony of noise from the horns of all we're... these cars and trucks from all over the nation on I-95 that go by and blow their horns. It's a wonderful thing. And I'll tell you a quick story. We were up there one of the years, and a guy came up to me, and he had tears streaming down his cheeks. And he said, I understand you helped organize this. I just wanted to personally shake, shake your hand and thank you. And he said, would it be okay if I went up to every person here and shook their hand and thanked them. And I said, certainly, do whatever you want. He said, I am a doctor. I think he said he was from Lancaster. He said, I am the brother of the pilot oh of the plane that was flown into the Pentagon. Oh my and he goodness. said, and I was driving up 95. He said, that's my car. I pulled on the side of the road. I climbed all the way up the hill oh to come God. up here. He said, I just started crying the minute I saw all the flags. But we've had a lot of experiences like that. So that's 9-11. And that's from 4 till 6. And then on uh, September the 14th, we have our event for Super Citizen. If you're a Super Citizen member, you'll receive it in the mail. And on the 15th, we will be back on Primetime TV with our great show. And they can't take us off Primetime TV. Thank you all for tuning in to Super Citizen TV. I am Pat McDonough, this is Frank Marchand, and Kimberly Claysek is not with us because she had a previous engagement, but she thanks you also.